So in conclusion, what does it mean to say that all people are equal but live separately from them? Our lived separation is a more powerful message because the separation is manifested in action while inclusion is not. You have to make sense of what is being said, but the power of what's actually being lived. And you, you do make sense of it. And a lot of this work, I think, for whites is trying to uncover how did I make sense of it and then how, what informed that. Um, most likely you made sense of it from the culture at large, and that's guaranteed to be problematic. So this is the Academy Board of Governors who decide the Oscars. I'll just let you look at it for a minute. So this is under the sec uh, section of, of um, new racism, racism in the media. So media representations compound the impact of racial segregation on most whites' limited understanding of people of color. Movies, for example, have a profound effect on our ideas about the world. Key social concepts such as masculinity and femininity, sexuality, desire, adventure, romance, family, love, deviancy, and normalcy, violence and conflict are all conveyed to us through the stories told in films. We can see the power of movies to shape children's desires, fantasies, identities, and play as early as age two. Are any of you tuned into how influenced two-year-olds are by films? Shrek and... I don't know what else they watch. Um, in many ways, it's become impossible to think and imagine outside the influence of movies. Now consider that the vast majority of all mainstream films are re written and directed by white males. In fact, the 10 highest grossing films of all time worldwide were all directed by white men. Because of the racial segregation that is ubiquitous throughout all levels of society, it follows that these men are very unlikely to have gone to school with, lived near, been taught by, or been employed by or with people of color. Therefore, like many of us, they are unlikely to have meaningful cross-racial relationships. Yet these men are society's cultural authors or storytellers. Their imaginations, their desires, their worldviews, and their conceptions of people of color become ours. Consider the implications of this very privileged, homogeneous, and racially isolated group essentially telling our culture stories. These implications aren't problematic because privileged white men are bad people. They are problematic because their worldview is necessarily very limited, especially regarding race. Yet it is virtually the only worldview many of us see, and it unavoidably and quite powerfully shapes our worldview. Just a Vanity Fair issue on Hollywood actresses. 